Hi guys, welcome to my channel and this is the new topic water technology and today to today we are going to discuss about the introduction of water technology that means the sources of water and contamination of water and oddness of water how what is oddness types of oddness disadvantages of oddness these things we'll going to discuss in this session so water is an inorganic transparent tasteless odorless and nearly colorless chemical substance and the chemical formula of water is h2o two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded with one oxygen atom and it is very essential for human things or any living organisms living beings after air so after air this is the very essential without water we cannot survive uh, at least uh, we can only survive within days only we cannot survive weeks also without water so where is this water on the earth surface yes there is a three parts of earth is fully covered by the water but in that water 96.5 percentage occupied in the oceans only just 2.5 percentage fresh water is available in the 2.5 percentage if you divide that 2.5 fresh water it is available as a glaciers and ice caps as 68.7 percentage and surface water and fresh water is only 1.2 percentage and 1.2 if you classified it so it's that water is 3 percentage present in the atmosphere and living things are uh, um, sharing the 0.26 percentage reverse 0.2 49 percentage and Mars has swaps 2.6 percentage and ground and ice and permamos that means solid uh, frozen sol soils these are having 69.0 percentage of water that means the surface pure water is very very less amount presented around us okay so how water is conservating so how water is conservating it's it's explained by the water cycle when the sun radiation fall down on the surface water water will be evaporated the evaporated water condensed and the when the temperatures are decreased it is precipitated as rain and it start to journey on the surface of the earth when it is fall on the various places from that places it start to journey and they are combined each other make it as a streams and they merge into rivers that rivers again merge into oceans and again cycle is continuous like that like that water is conservating to use for different purposes okay and the water around us is pure water is useful for any purpose that mean any activity at least is it useful for the drinking purpose no why because water is contaminated by the different thing from starting point to ending point that mean when the rain is when the water is fall down from the skies to earth surface as a rain so from that point to again when they are merged into the oceans up to that end point they are different differently they are contaminating because of different type of environments okay the first one is dissolved gases when the rain water is falling down on the earth surface the atmospheric gases the toxic gases present in the atmosphere they are mixed with the gases they dissolve into the gases like co2 h2s so2 these gases present in the atmosphere because of our industrialization and urban development we are producing these gases so these gases are dissolved into the at water and they create the contamination of water and when the water is thought journey on the earth surface earth is abounded with the different types of minerals these minerals slowly dissolve into water and dissolved minerals also come into the water and suspended particles like sand mud dust particle also mixed into the water when the water is stored for long time the organic matter will develop into water along with that biological contaminants like pathogenic bacteria ill diseasing agents like bacteria virus also develop in the water like that so many types contamination takes place in the water so these water are not useful for every purpose so we are going to address some of the problems how can we avoid these problems in the water in this in this unit so today topic is uh, hardness of water what is hardness hardness is the characteristic of water if water contains hardness 
that water doesn't produce good lather when it is interacted with the soap. So if soap gives the good lather with the water, that water is called soft water. If the soap doesn't produce good lather or it, instead of that uh, lather, it produces insoluble precipitate like white scum, that water is called hard water. So if you observe the water, it contains the different types of salts. Those are all called total dissolved salts. So TDS means total dissolved salts. That means it may be contain different type of salts in the water like calcium salts, magnesium salts, copper salt, potassium salts, sodium salt, aluminum salt, zinc salts. Like this, it's, any skin salt is come under into the total dissolved salts. But hardness causing salts are only calcium and magnesium salts that to calcium chloride, calcium sulfide and calcium bicarbonate. I like that magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfide, magnesium bicarbonate. So these six salts is called hardness causing salts. Uh, only these six salts only called hardness causing salts. But other, other non-hardness causing salts like copper plus two, potassium plus two, sodium plus two and uh, magnesium aluminum. These are the non-hardness causing salts. Totally all these salts is called all these salts is called total dissolved salts. These all are completely dissolved in water. These are called total dissolved salts. So mainly hardness is because of only calcium and magnesium salts. Only calcium and magnesium salts create the hardness in the water. You need to remember the six salt calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium sulfide, magnesium sulfide, calcium bicarbonate, magnesium bicarbonate. So thing is these are completely dissolved in water. They are completely soluble in water. That's why we are unable to remove easily. If they are not completely soluble, we can easily remove by separation process, but they are completely soluble in water. That's create problem. That's the uh, need of study how they are soluble, how we can remove by different process. This is a necessary because of only they are completely soluble in water. And what is soap? How it produces lather with water? So we already we already defined oddness. Oddness means if the soap will not produce good lather with the water, then that water is called hard water. So how it produces lather with water? The soap, how it is produces lather with water. So what is soap? Soap is chemically called sodium stearate. So that means C17, H35, COO, NA. Sodium stearate is called soap. When it is interact with the water, it produces stearic acid, which is responsible for the good foam or lather. For example, if you see here, sodium stearate. So when it is interact with the water, only water, it is pure water. It doesn't having anything. Just let take it as so it is a only pure water when it is interact with the water it produces stearic acid so this is the uh, foam and it also produces the sodium hydroxide so this is responsible for the foam so why hard water doesn't produce a lather with soap so for example if you take water that contains the hardness causing salts that means you are taking a water that water sample containing the hardness causing salts like ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 these ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 are interacted with the stearic acid before the water okay so before the water these salts interact with the sodium stearate and they produces the calcium stearate when the calcium plus to interact with the soap, it produces calcium stearate. When the magnesium plus to interact with the soap, it produces magnesium stearate. These are the white scums. These are these are, are non-soluble in the water. These are white scums. So in previous uh, point, only water is there. Water interact with this sodium stearate and produce the stearic acid. That stearic acid is cause for the lather. But here, instead of stearic acid, calcium stearate and magnesium stearate is a solid. So, uh, the precipitates is forming. These will not produce as good lather. After consuming of all calcium plus two and magnesium plus two, then water is ready to produce uh, form, foam or lather. So that is a problem. Um, there is a two types of hardness is there temporary hardness and permanent hardness temporary hardness is also called carbonate hardness 
permanent oddness is also called non carbonate oddness so what is temporary oddness temporary oddness mean the oddness is temporary it can easily removed by physical process simple process like heating boiling those things okay so this is because of temporary oddness is mainly because of carbonates bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium that mean magnesium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate if water only contains calcium bicarbonate or magnesium bicarbonate then that water oddness is called temporary oddness and this water can be removing by boiling process that mean oddness removal is very cheap and easy process that's why it is called temporary oddness and this oddness is because of bicarbonates that's why it is called carbonate oddness remember it okay next permanent oddness permanent oddness means it is not easily removable it is very hard so it is not easily removable that's why it is called permanent oddness but it is not possible that mean it is not impossible to remove it can be removable but by the some difficult process like chemical process so it cannot be removing by boiling process and it is a because of chlorides and sulfides of calcium and magnesium salts remaining four salt calcium chloride calcium sulfide magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfide if the if any one of the four salt is present in the water that water is called permanent hardness water so if any one of the these two salts present in the water it is called temporary oddness water so these are the things if water contains any uh, this this one salt and this one salt so that oddness is called total oddness that mean if water contains temporary oddness causing salts and permanent oddness causing salts then that water is simply called hard water or total hard water okay so how can you temporary oddness can be removed by boiling so we already discussed the the definition of temporary oddness temporary oddness mean easily removable oddness by boiling process then how can we remove the uh, temporary oddness by boiling process so when you are heating the water uh, water that mean temporary water the temporary water contains calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonate so heat energy also applied on the calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonates when you heat uh, at up to 100 degree centigrade so this calcium bicarbonate is completely soluble in water so it is slowly turned into calcium carbonate and co2 gas will releases and h2 also produced in the water okay this calcium carbonate is a insoluble precipitate it completely removed by the filtration process so that mean here thing is the soluble compounds calcium bicarbonate soluble compound is a in water when you heat the water it converting into insoluble compound insoluble precipitate so when it is soluble compound is converting into insoluble precipitate that can be easily removed by filtration process our problem is these all salts are completely dissolved in the water if you make it as a insoluble precipitate we can easily remove by the filtration process the same principle is applied here when you heat the water the soluble things which are present in the water converting into insoluble things we can easily remove it so that is a thing so when you heat the water magnesium bicarbonate it is a soluble in water it converting into magnesium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide is a precipitate we can easily remove this calcium carbonate and magnesium hydroxide like that we can remove the temporary oddness present in the water so hard total oddness mean carbonate oddness plus non carbonate oddness or temporary oddness or permanent oddness okay next thing is what is the disadvantage of hard water this hard water is not useful for domestic purpose as well as industrial purpose domestic purpose mean so for drinking purpose if you have if you drink the hard water which having temporary oddness causing salts when you are taking that water into your biological system there is so much heat generated in the biological system because of that heat water contain dissolved salts like calcium bicarbonate magnesium bicarbonate interact with the a heat and they are forms a insoluble precipitate those are those are formed as the stones in the kidney 
and uh, at least for sanitizing purpose bathing purpose laundering dishwashing dishwashing and for cooking purpose these are not suitable for the usage this hot water is not suitable for this purpose I like that industrial purpose industry requires a very specific uh, specific things is required for the do a chemical reaction for example if you take medicinal industry pharmaceutical industry if you use hard water to make a tablets or something so the hardness causing soils present in the water may create these side effects to the consumer okay so like that sugar industry concrete industry pharmaceutical industry textile industry drying industry and thermal power plants using water boilers to evaporate the water that evaporated water produces the uh, electricity by passing into turbines so there also it create problems we are we will going to discuss these thing in the next sessions so these are the disadvantages of hard water and, uh, and this is the topic for today and next session we are going to discuss about the how we can express hardness that mean units of hardness and how we can express hardness in terms of CaCO3 equivalents these things will be discussed and for more videos on electrochemistry and different uh, basic chemistry these things you can subscribe my channel uh, the links are provided in the description uh, thank you for listening bye